Hey guys, it's Mr. Griffin. Today we're going to be talking about the Pythagorean Theorem practice page. Now the Pythagorean Theorem is this um, concept that this guy named Pythagoras a long, long time ago figured out. Okay, well, he figured out that when you're dealing with a right triangle, sorry, I'm just blowing this up a little bigger. Okay, when talking about right triangles, and again, right triangles are triangles that have one right angle. Okay, uh, so one of their, their angles is 90 degrees, and... Um, you can know that because of this little box. Okay, uh, the Pythagorean theorem states, well, okay, but before we get into that, um, so there are three sides to a triangle, any triangle, right? But in a right triangle, there are two different types of sides. The two sides that make up the right angle are known as legs. So this is a leg and this is a leg. The third side is called the hypotenuse. Now what Pythagoras figured out is if you take the side of a leg, so let's label the legs. In the legs, we label A and B. The hypotenuse, we label C. Okay, well, Pythagoras figured out that if we take A squared plus B squared, that uh, those lengths squared added together equals C squared. Okay, so uh, now we can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the length of the missing side. Okay, now these are going to be decimals, okay? Uh, all, almost all of them. There are a few that are perfect, um, uh, perfect triangles, like if the two legs are three and four, then the hypotenuse will be five even. Okay, that, that happens on occasion, but a lot of these, probably most of these are gonna wind up being decimals, so don't be freaked out whenever your answer is a decimal. Might even be a really long decimal, but we're gonna round to the nearest tenth. As one decimal point. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in what we know. Okay, A is 1, so we know 1 squared plus B. B is 2, so 2 squared equals, uh, we don't know what C is, right? That's what we're trying to find. So it equals C squared. Okay, now all we got to do is solve for C. Okay, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, so 1 plus 4 equals um, 5. Okay, so again, all we've done is simplify this expression, right? So 5 is equal to c squared. Well, we know how to get c by, by itself if it was 5 times c equals, say, 15. Okay, since it's c times 5, we would divide by 5, right? We do the opposite. Well, what if it was um, c over 3 equals 4? Well, we know how to get rid of a divided by 3. We multiply by 3 right? Multiply by 3. We know how to do that. What about when it's c squared? How do we get rid of a squared? Okay, well this is saying uh, what, a way that we can do that is to take the square root. Okay, remember the square root says what number times itself equals this value. So if I take the square root of 64, what number times itself equals 64? A does. Okay, if you take the square root of 36, what number times itself equals 36? That's 6. Well, if you have c squared, well, heck, let's even say if you have, let's use a real number, okay, what if we have 5 squared? Okay, we have, actually, let me write it in white. So if we have 5 squared, we know what that value is 25, right? Well, instead of simplifying it to 25, if we take the square root of 5 squared, Okay, 5 squared is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. Okay, that's how you get rid of the, the squared. You take the square root. Okay, if we have um, 4 squared is 16. We know that's 16. But instead of simplifying that to 16, what if we take the square root of 16? The square root of 16 is 4. So the way you get rid of that squared is you take the square root. So if we have C, here, c squared, okay, we have c squared, we don't know what c is, but whatever that value is, we know if we take the square root of it, it's going to leave us with c. Okay, well now I've got to take the square root of the other side, because I've taken the square root of one side, now my equation's not balanced, so i got to balance it out by taking the square root of the other side. That balances, that out. balances it out, okay, what number times itself is 5? You're not going to be able to do that in your head, you're going to need to use a calculator, okay? Um, there is a uh, square root function on pretty much every calculator. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get to, so um, 
you may have to, I don't know, watch a YouTube video or something. If you have a complicated calculator, but you just hit one of these blue ones, you hit five, square root button, and it gives you 2.23607679. Okay, that's a really long decimal, but we're gonna round to the nearest tenth. So 2.23, round to 2.2, and that's your solution. 2.2 is the length of that missing side. It looks like it's a lot of work. It's really not that bad. I just talked about every step, okay? Um, the trickiest part, not the trickiest part, it's actually really easy. You just have to remember to do it, okay? Just make sure you label your triangle correctly, okay? The hypotenuse is C, okay? Two legs, the legs make up the right angle, okay? So since these two sides make up the right angle, this is A and this is B. That third side, which is also always the longest side, that side is always C. It, A and B can flip-flop, okay? A and B can, can flip-flop, it doesn't matter. Um, but C has to be your hypotenuse, okay? So again, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is four, so four squared plus B is two, two squared equals C squared. Four squared is 16 plus four equals C squared. 16 plus four is 20 equals c squared. Again, how do I get that c by itself? Take the square root, take the square root. Want to find the square root of 20? Square root of 20 is 4.47213359. Okay, again, we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So square root of 20 is 4.5 is equal to c. Okay, um, that's the last one of those I'm going to do with you. Uh, when you're solving for the hypotenuse, it's really, I mean, just straight up pretty easy. Okay, the tricky part, those you're both solving for the hypotenuse, right? Um, those you're both solving for the hypotenuse. Okay, this is when it starts to get tricky on number seven. Number seven, it gives you a leg and the hypotenuse, and you need to solve for the other leg. So this is where it's essential that you label your, your uh, triangle correctly, because guaranteed, you're gonna to wanna to make the missing side C, and that's not correct. It's not C, okay? This is a leg, so it's A. This is a leg, so it's B. And this is my hypotenuse, it's C, okay? Same procedure at the beginning. It's A squared plus B squared equals C squared, okay? Plug in what we know. A is five, so five squared plus B is, we don't know what B is. B squared equals C squared. Oh, we know what C is now, so we don't write in C squared, we write in what C is, nine squared. Okay, simplify the expressions and then we'll solve for B. So five squared is 25. We don't know what B is, so we just leave it as B squared equals nine squared is 81. Now we need to get B by itself. So we've got this times b and plus 25. So how do we what do we need to do to get b by itself? The first step is to get rid of this plus 25. We do that by subtracting 25. So we do that, that leaves us b by itself, or b squared by itself. So if we subtract 25 from this side, we've got to subtract 25 from this side, and that gives us um, I don't know what that is, 81 minus 25, 56. Okay. Now it's that, that same thing. How do I get B by itself? I take the square root of B squared. That gives me B by itself. So I take the square root of one side. I'm going to take the square root of the other side. Um, 56 square root button gives me 7.48. Um, 7.48 simplifies to 7.5. And that's the length of that missing side. Okay? If you put this as your C, which a lot of you will want to do, you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay? Um, here's another one. You're solving for a leg, okay? You're solving for um, either A or C. Oh, no, a, a, either A or B, not C, okay? So again, label your side. This is A and B, this is C, right? This is your C side, okay? A and B can flip-flop, doesn't matter what you choose. I'm gonna choose A for my missing side, B for the, si the known side. Okay, now let's go ahead and um, solve it. 
a squared plus b is 4. 4 squared equals 14 squared. Okay, let's go ahead and solve it. I don't know what a squared is, so I'm just going to bring it down. Plus, 4 squared is 16 equals 14 squared. You get 196. Okay, to get a by itself, we subtract 16. Subtract 16 gives me 180 equal to a squared. Okay, again, how do I get a by itself? Take the square root, that gives me a by itself. Take the square root, 180 divided by, not divided by, 180 square root gives me 13.416407. Again, rounding to the nearest tenth gives you 13.4. And that's your side length for a. Now again, this could, if you flip flopped them, but this is B and this side's A, then you may calculate B equals 13.4. Same thing, okay? It doesn't matter if you wind up with your solution as A or B, that just depends on how you set it up. It should not be C though, okay? Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, these are more just calculating. Okay, now you gotta figure out, do the following lengths form a right triangle? Well, you know, if it does form a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So again, the only tricky part is labeling your triangle correctly. Okay, so which side, uh, well, this is another, in, in geometry, and especially next year, and this year it's a little, little anyway, we'll, we'll talk about it. Next year in geometry, you can't take anything for granted. If it doesn't tell you which side's the right angle, you can't assume which side's the right angle, okay? So how do you know which side's the hypotenuse? Well, think back to what I said earlier. The hypotenuse is always the longest side, okay? So this side looks like it's the right angle, okay? And maybe it is, but we can't take that for granted. The way that you figure out which side's the hypotenuse is by which side is the longest side. So which side's the longest side? This one, this is my C value. That means my other two sides this must be A, and this must be B. Okay, I've got students lining up already, so I gotta kind of blast through this one so they can get inside. Okay, so again, A, is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Plug in the values. A is 7.5 squared plus B is 10 squared equals C is 10.3 squared. If this is true, then it's a right triangle. If it's not true, it's not a right triangle. So let's see if it's true. 7.5 squared, 7.5 times 7.5 gives me 56.25. Plus 10 squared is 100. 10.3 squared, 10.3 times 10.3 gives me 106.09. Okay, for these, you shouldn't be rounding. Okay, you need to be finding exact angles. 56.25 plus 100 is 156.25. Is that equal to 106.09? No, it's not. No, this is not a right triangle. Okay, I would do more, but I got kids lined up. So um, go ahead and knock this out. If you have any questions or comments, uh, we're not doing Google Meet soccer on um, the, the uh, student, the state test, so you can give me a call or an email and I'll help you do it. Thanks a lot. See you next time.